Okay, friends, welcome. Hello. We're we, excited to be back. We yes. have a really, really fun episode today all about mothers. Yeah, it is the month of motherhood. <laughs> <laughs> celebrating mom, celebrating yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. I think last year we did an episode all about self-care. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, we wanted to do something different. You know, I actually, on YouTube, I'll post it when it, it's Mother's Day again of how to have a terrible Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, I remember that. It's great. <laughs> I liked that. That was funny. So basically, it's lower your expectations. Don't expect anything, yeah. and then you're always pleasantly surprised. <laughs> right. It's perfect. But today, we're going to talk about the influence that we have on our children and how we can be an influence to them. Yeah. And why, like, what you're doing, it matters. Because I think when I know when all my kids were little, it was just, it felt chaotic a lot of the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Like so many sleepless nights and your days are like so repetitive. Like, okay, mm -hmm. we're doing this again, right? And the so many messes and fighting and tears. And I think the loneliness. Yeah. Like when you're a new mom and stuff, there's a lot of yeah. loneliness that comes with that too. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. Um. So when I think of an influence of mothers, I, it made me just kind of think back to my own childhood because I had a really amazing mother. And because of her, whenever um, somebody would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, my answer was I wanted to be a mom. And that was just like a given because my mom was awesome and she taught me faith and she taught me hard work and um, raised eight kids to be bright, intelligent, capable people. And, and she was just such a good example of of service and love and kindness and and so I watched her and I love that I had that powerful influence and didn't know till later till I moved away from home how blessed and lucky I was to have that kind of mother in my life um, but she was the reason that that was my lifelong goal you know because I was blessed with that um, so I feel really lucky about that um, I know not everybody has that kind of influence of a mother but you get to decide the kind of mother you get to be and the kind of influence you get to be on your own children. Yeah, Karna and I were talking about this beforehand is, uh, and I've been sharing this a little bit more and more of why I feel so passionately about creating these no yelling groups. And uh, because instead of like this beautiful experience of like this great relationship with your mom and thinking she's so wonderful, mine was very opposite and was very different. And a lot of, <laughs> yelling a lot of abuse um so much going on and so when for a long time when i thought of mothers i did not think highly of the title um i feel a little emotional right now and i wanted to give my kids something more than what i had and so part of the reason i'm so passionate about helping moms is because if I could just help even one kid to not have to endure what I had to go through, like I think that is just beautiful and wonderful. And so um, I can see, I uh, have good friends and beautiful people like her and, and, and hearing their mother's story. And I can see potential in my own self that I can become something like that. And then those of you who have been through hard times and uh, you don't have a close relationship with your mom, I can have so much empathy for you of longing to be held or some of these tender things that I would have died to have had and would have loved to um, experience. And so instead of me personally getting to experience it from my own mother, I get to now give it to my children. And that is why I am so passionate about everything that I do is because of that. You know what I love about Megan is that um, these kinds of cycles, as we know, abuse cycles are not easy to break and to overcome. Most often somebody that has that experience growing up repeats that in their own home. And Megan has been really strong. <laughs> Me cry. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you cry. Um, I know. Megan's really strong and has overcome this hardship in her life and is an amazing mother to her children and um, doesn't yell at her children, but loves them and gives them the world. And they're lucky to have her. And, um, and what I love, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I know we're both a mess, sorry. Blah. Um, I love that she can create what she dreams. And I think that that's important to understand that we can all do that as mothers. We have such a huge influence on our children's lives and the things that we say and we do affect how they feel about themselves. 
and it makes a lifelong difference for them. You know, this is, this is from her childhood, from Megan's childhood, and still she feels the pain of it. And um, so the things that you say and you do to your children now are not to scare you, but are going to affect them for the rest of their lives. Um, I have a little picture saying on my fridge that says, be the mom you want them to remember. And I have to look at that often to remind myself to continue to be what I want them to remember. I want them to remember somebody loving and somebody giving and somebody kind. Um, and so, especially on those days when I'm not feeling that way, I look at that sign and I try to remember, okay, is this who I want them to remember? Am I being that? And I felt really um, touched one day when my daughter was looking at it and she said, mom, I love that sign because you are the mom I want to remember. And it was so sweet to me. I was like, oh, yes. It actually meant something to my kids too. But also just the fact that she said that was, it was really meaningful to me. And, and so this, this episode is important to me because I really think that we all need to understand that our daily choices and our daily actions and the words that we say and how we say those words really matter. And, um, most often you are doing better than you think you are. Uh, we get really hard and down on ourselves so often as moms thinking we're not doing enough. And most of the time you're doing wonderfully. Um, it's hard to see it though. <laughs> and it's yeah. not recognized often by our children. <laughs> Until they get older, I guess. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. I remember um, as an adult looking back, maybe after my first child was born or something around that time and calling my mom and just thanking her and just letting her know, oh man, how did you do all this? This is so hard. Thank you so much for all you did all these years. And I never really recognized it. And so that's going to come and maybe 20 years down the road that it comes, but it's going to come that appreciation that you, um, that your children will give you for all your hard work may not be recognized yet. And that's kind of the hardest part of being a mom that it's just sort of expected that you serve all day long for no thanks, but um, someday it will be recognized and thanked for. Yeah, I think I love this quote. Karn and I went on a quote craze as we were <laughs> both preparing for this episode, and it was really fun. Actually, I listened to a bunch of YouTube talks too, of just getting myself in this right mindset, and uh, it was awesome. Like as I listened to these and read all these quotes, I thought, yes, what I'm doing matters. Like it may, the world may look at it like you're not really contributing to society. You're not really doing all these things. And, uh, but you are. Motherhood is an eternal calling. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a temporary side gig. Like I've, I've talked about homeschool being a temporary gig, right? Because they eventually right. grow up. But you are forever a mom. Mm -hmm. um, and it, that's beautiful. And I love this it's quote. 24 seven too. It's, yeah. Forget a break. <laughs> This quote by E.T. Sullivan, it said, we fancy that God can only manage his world with battalions when all the while he's doing it by beautiful babies. When a wrong wants writing or a truth needs preaching or a continent needs opening, God sends a baby into the world, perhaps in a simple home and of some obscure mother. And then God puts the idea into the mother's heart and she puts it into the baby's mind. And then God waits. The greatest forces in the world are not the earthquakes and thunderbolts. The greatest forces in the world are babies. I love that so much. That's such a sweet thing. And if you think about that in your own life and how much your babies have changed you, um, each time you hold a brand new baby in your arms, it's like the whole world has changed and it's just an amazing, amazing feeling. Yeah. So with, um, with motherhood being this big calling, like you, I, whenever I hear things like women have no power and I think you're crazy, I like have complete control and power over my home, right? <laughs> like I am, I am raising another generation. Mm -hmm. I can sway them for, with my opinions. I can like, I could, I mean, you could do some crazy stuff if you really wanted to, <laughs> right? Like, Hey, the sky is actually green and the grass is blue, right? Like you, you can, could. you really could. That's true. And, and you think about like, have you ever noticed your kids saying and doing the things that you say and do? And you're like, where did you learn that? And of course they learned it from you, right? You know, they heard you say it that way or do it that way. And, or you recognize, you know, their attitude or whatever. Something the other day I was teasing my husband and he, he was laughing and he said, that face you just made was just like Elsie. It's like, what? <laughs> you mean well, her face is cute. like mine. So welcome. Right? <laughs> but it just made me laugh how um, when you live in a home and you influence each other, 
you're, you're going to pick up very similar characteristics and you're going to think and behave in very similar ways because the things you say are going to sink into them. So what I've noticed is um, a lot of the people that are Karna and I, our friends circle, like our homeschool friend circles the same pretty much, mm -hmm. right? Give and take a few extra special souls. But uh, it's basically the same people. And this group of women, they're powerful. Like they're beautiful, amazing women. And then I think of the people in my membership and they like all want better. And like, how can I make my life better? And then people in my no yelling group. And it's like, I all want to be better. Like, how do I be a better person? How do I be a better mom? And uh, they're all planting these seeds for their children, right? Like, here's a seed of goodness. Here's a seed of truth. Here's a seed of kindness. And with seeds, you don't get to see the roots growing but you get to take care of a seed, right? And you get to nurture it and take care of it. And as you give it sun and water and good soil and uh, it grows strong roots so that when it grows, it can't be swayed with the wind. It can't just be blown over, it has strong roots. And that's the influence that you are doing. And that's why you don't see it is because right now you're sowing the seeds. Yeah, that's great. I like that visual. I think that's so good to know. Um, I liked this little quote, here's my turn. Um, this is by a woman named Donna Ball. I'm not certain who she is, but I liked her quote. <laughs> it said, motherhood is a choice you make every day to put someone else's happiness and well-being ahead of your own, to teach the hard lessons, to do the right thing, even when you're not sure what the right thing is, and to forgive yourself over and over again for doing everything wrong. And I just love that because we as moms, we're just kind of learning as we go. There really is no manual for parenthood. I mean, there's a lot of books about parenthood, but there really is no manual for how to figure it all out. And um, we, we're all learning as we go and we're all trying our best and we're all growing and getting stronger and um, learning these lessons as we go. But um, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail sometimes. You're going to not know what to do sometimes. Sometimes, but a lot of times. A lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times. Um, but the choices you make, you are every day putting someone else's well-being ahead of your own. And that, that's just kind of part of being a mom, right? And yeah, so teaching them. I had some ideas of how to really be, like how to be an influence for good, basically, mm -hmm. right? Because you're always going to be an influence and like your actions will decide whether or not it's, it's something. Not. Yeah. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. but so the first thing, and, and I love that with homeschooling, that this one is so much easier, but it's just being available. Because with um, the craziness of if you were in school all day and then you have activities and mom has things she needs to do, then there's not a lot of time to just be together. Mm -hmm. But when you're able to be available when your kids are ready, and for my teens, it's late at night as I'm like falling asleep, right? It's like, now I'm ready to talk. So I'm just being available of being able to build that relationship with a little kid, right? They, they want to just sit by you and touch you and, and hold you and those little things, but just being available, available to, um, to really listen to them, to be able to hear them and not judge them or correct them, right? Like, Hey, I want to do these things. And maybe it goes against a little bit of some of the things you've been teaching. And so to be able to listen to them and say, well, what do you think about doing that? My favorite thing I've been saying is like, if this were your kid, what would you say to them? And they're like, <laughs> well, now that you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> great. Yeah. So I think being available is a really great place to start mm -hmm. of being able to be a powerful influence to them. Yeah, that's a good one. Do you want me to keep going? I have more. Yeah, go okay. for it. There's your next one. <laughs> I always have so much to say. I let you want to know something funny. Like when I was in school, I got kicked out of classes a lot for talking. <laughs> and now like I'm doing a podcast and I've been speaking <laughs> at homeschool conferences. And I was like, you didn't even know this was my gift. You were I love trying it. to shut down my gift. And so I keep sending speaker presentation requests to Megan. I'm like, I don't want to be a speaker here. Yeah. <laughs> you do Cards it. like the sweet little sweet things. And I'm, like, and I'm, I'm the one obnoxious. who never talks in class and I was like afraid to raise my hand. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, so let's see, availability. Let's see their next, and Karna kind of mentioned this too. They are, our children are influenced by what we do. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we're, we want to tell them, do what I say, but they will more than likely do what we do. Right. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that with like, I think it's easier to see with some of your bad habits when you're yeah, definitely. that. 
and you're like, oh, you're sarcastic. Where did you learn that? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's from dad, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, the, like, what are we doing? Do we go out of our way to help people? Do we say kind things about others, right? Mm -hmm. um, are we using our time wisely? Yeah. Do we check out on our phone and then... Mm -hmm. Like, oh, do we read books in our spare time? Mm -hmm. Are we studying? Are we bettering ourselves? I, you know, it's interesting. I've always heard it said that you should um, read in front of your kids often so that they see you reading, so that they see reading as a good thing. And whenever I think of that, I'm like, well, I most often do my personal reading before they're awake mm -hmm. because I just, it's the only time it's quiet and then I can actually focus. And so sometimes I uh, make a conscious effort to in the afternoon when I wouldn't normally sit down on the couch and read a book just so that they see me actually reading because um, very often they wouldn't otherwise. So. Yeah. I, I know I actually take books with me now in my bags. So mm -hmm. like if I get stuck somewhere in the good old days when we could leave our house, like uh, it's funny, I it. haven't read those books for a while because my bag's just sitting at the home at our <laughs> house. And I thought, oh, I really like those books. They're just homeschooling books like Charlotte makes some homeschool books I like to pick at. And so, but yeah, just seeing like, if you're going somewhere instead of checking out on your phone, which is so yeah. easy to do, like, oh, read a book. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think, and then this next one is be their cheerleader, not their drill sergeant. Because I think That's it's good. really easy, especially the more kids you throw into the mix. It's like, come on, we got to go. Get up. Let's get going. Eat your breakfast. Get clean your room to be a drill sergeant, but instead be their cheerleader and just like, instead of yelling what they're doing wrong, cheer the things that they're doing right. Yeah. And just being that influence of like, I've got your back. Like I see all these beautiful traits in you and I'm going to sit and just annoyingly point them out and like <laughs> raw, raw cheer them on. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Do you have any more? I have more. Do you want me to keep going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you take this one. You're doing such a good job right now. I know. We really didn't like get to do our notes together, but it's trickier doing this. Separately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then also like you are their first teacher. So mm. you have not only like, if you've been homeschooling the whole time, you've taught them to read. Um, even before that you taught them to, you like tie their shoes or to feed yeah. themselves and use the potty and all those types of things. Right. And then with homeschooling, you teach them math and all this stuff, but then you also become their teacher the, to take care of themselves to, um, and we've, I've talked a lot about this emotional with, health. Yeah. Like the taking care of your finances, taking mm -hmm. care of your physical health, your mm -hmm. emotional health, your mental health, um, how to be kind and serve. And I think because of that being their first teacher, um, they're going to trust you and value you a lot mm -hmm. and really, um, they're going to really believe what you tell them. And so, <laughs> You know, whether it's truth or not, what you're telling them, you know, you talked about, you could tell them all kinds of crazy things and they believe it. And I really think that that's true. And so you do have to be cautious and careful about the things that you're saying and teaching them because they, they're really going to trust you. And so make those things matter. And I think too, it kind of goes along with the cheerleader thing. If you take like what you're telling them. So if uh, this is weird. So my sister always would say like, you have fish eyes, your eyes are the color of fish. <laughs> and so it's funny. And as a kid, I'm like, oh, that means I have ugly eyes, mm. right? She wasn't saying the words like you have ugly eyes, but it was like, oh, you have like fish eyes. And oh, uh, like, and maybe that sounds sad, but like, whatever. I told you there was a lot going on. So she okay. was, I was always told I had bug me. eyes as a kid. Oh, so. that's funny with your beautiful blue they're eyes. Big. Well, they're <laughs> so perfect. pretty, but it's mm. funny. Like you take it and you're just like, yeah, that's truth. And yeah. it wasn't until I was an adult that I was like, actually, I kind of like that my eyes are kind of different. They're like a brown green and like a hint of yellow. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they're not this like bold color. They're just like a mix of colors. It's a combination. And so it's interesting what you're telling your kids are things that they're going to be remember later on in mm -hmm. life. Like, oh, my mom always said I was frumpy. Like, yeah, oh, they sure we said this yeah. about me. My mom told me I was terrible at math or, you know, whatever it might be yeah. that you're putting into their heads. And maybe you're not saying it directly, like your eyes are ugly, but you're saying it in a way that they're, they're projecting it as a bad thing on themselves. And yeah. So I think, yeah, that's important to be careful about how you say things to them. Yeah. There's a, the book mindset by Carol Dweck is really mm -hmm. good and talking about pointing out their effort in the things and the influence that that can have on them as well is like, instead of just like, oh, you're so smart. 
like, wow, that seemed like a difficult assignment and you pushed through it and figured out how to finish it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And so kind of being able to be an influence of teaching them how to do hard things and to push through because guess what? They're going to face hard things and how awesome to give them the skill of yeah. being able to face that. Yeah, that's great. I kind of feel like when I, my whole idea with my membership and, and everything I teach with that is that I want to arm my children with a backpack full of skills and tools. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's my influence. Now they get to choose whether or not they take the backpack and they choose whether or not they want to keep everything in the backpack. But when, as my babies start leaving the house, I want to say, here's this backpack. So think of like a 72 hour kit or an emergency preparedness pack. Then I was like, this is everything I wanted to give you while you were in my home. I feel choked up again. I'm feeling emotional about this. But you know, I'm about to leave. <laughs> yeah, because my oldest mm. is about to leave. And just mm -hmm. like, do you know I love you? And I love you so much. I want to give you all of these things. And then they totally get to choose whether or not they want to use them or not. Right. But what a beautiful influence you have that is going to bless generations. Like this doesn't just affect your children. It also will bleed over into their children's lives, into your grandchildren's lives. And mm -hmm. so being a mother is one of the most powerful, beautiful things you can be. Like you have direct influence on such beautiful people. Yeah, it's great. I love that. Um, one more little quote that I love, and I think this is important. There's no perfect, there's no way to be a perfect mother and a million ways to be a good one. And I, I think it's important to remember that we're not going to be perfect at this. You know, we're, we're throwing all these ideals at you and none of us is going to be perfect at it. We're going to fail a lot. We're going to learn a lot of lessons through all of this. But you can be a good mom and you can just try your best every day and do the best that you have inside of you. And that's going to be enough. And it's going to raise good children that love you and respect you and others. Um, give them those tools, like Megan said, as they leave the home to be good people. Yeah, I love um, in this latest from President Nelson, he was talking about um, our prophet in our church was that the Lord loves effort. Mm -hmm. and so just try like he's not even saying be perfect like just keep trying you're yeah. totally gonna mess up but like you get a little bit better every day and can you imagine like how amazing that looks in five years ten years in a little bit you're a better every single day mm -hmm. so just a little bit like the lord fills in the gaps you right. do your best and you just turn the rest over to the lord and let him fill in the gaps mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, happy Mother's Day yes. to all of you amazing mothers. You guys are doing a good thing for your kids, and you are the best mom for them, and they're lucky yeah. to have you. So we love you guys, and mm -hmm. we will see you next week. Yes. See you. Bye-bye.